Chapter 14, The Breakup. Now playing as Ash, the FanCon convention is in full swing when a piercing scream shatters the joyous ambience. Ava. You whip around and see one of the convention goers striking out at her with a prop weapon. You dash forward, skillfully maneuvering your way through the crowd, but before you reach her side, she sinks into her stance, tapping into the self-defense training you gave her. She dodges the man's attack and counters with a swift kick to his stomach. Get away from me! His assailant stumbles back, eyes wide as his prop weapon clatters to the ground. Fury boils in your veins, adrenaline surging as the attacker Loom looks over from Ava to the door and makes a run for it. Tackle him. You react instinctively, lunging forward and tackling the man onto the hard floor. Get off me! He squirms beneath you, struggling in vain to break free. Ash, look out! The man makes a grab for his weapon. You twist his arm and pin it beneath your knee. Stay down, it's over. Soon the fan con security arrives and takes the man into custody, while ushering the other fans out of the room. The moment the threat is over, you rush to her side. Ava, did that monster hurt you? No, thanks to the training that you taught me, he didn't even scratch me. Despite her calm words, you can see the tear in her eyes and hear her rapid breathing. She needs me right now. I should wrap her in my arms. With the adrenaline still coursing through your veins, you pull her into a reassuring embrace. Her body trembles slightly against yours, but she clings to you, tucking her head under your chin. You're safe now. You hold her close, your fingers lightly stroking her back, as you both take a moment to catch your breath. But as the sweet smell of her perfume fills your senses, guilt begins to pool in your belly. I don't know what I would have done without you. If I had been doing my job, you wouldn't have been attacked at all. Back in the hotel room, you draw Ava a relaxing bath to help her recover from the scare, but a knock at the door pulls you away. Mr. Harper, I was instructed to update you on the status of the disturbance you experienced at the convention. I'd call it a hell of a lot more than a disturbance. Then you'll be happy to hear we esc escorted the perpetrator off the premises. He won't be allowed to return. You let him go. Oh no. It's standard protocol to remove any troublemakers uh, from the convention for safety of our guests. I need to speak with your superior. I understand you're following protocol, but he committed a crime and needs to be charged. I'm sorry, we didn't realize the gravity of the situation. We'll get the authorities involved immediately. Good, then I expect an update the instant you have one. Yes, sir. You nearly slam the door behind him and take a few deep breaths to calm your surging anger as you pace the room. Can you really be angry with him for a dereliction of duty? That's the whole reason this happened in the first place. Ava emerges from the bathroom, seeming much more calmer than when she went in. But who was that? Of insecurity, they let your attacker walk free. This should have never happened. If I had just... Ash, it's not your fault. I should have stayed at the convention. If I'd been there, I would have been sure or made sure they kept him in custody. Instead, I came to you. She crosses the room to your side, her expression soft, setting you at ease. I'm glad you did. I needed you in that moment. You can't blame yourself for what's happening, Ash. The con security's at fault, not you. She reaches out her fingers, gently touching her hand, trying to reassure you. You kept me safe back there. I feel safe right now because you're here. If I had been fully focused on my job, the guy would have never gotten near you. I should have never left your side. Then don't leave me now. I don't want to be alone. Her eyes are full of sorrow, and you know you couldn't part from her right now, even if you wanted to. You cup her face with your hand, your thumb brushing against her cheek as she leans into your touch. Uh, I'll stay, then. Your heart pounds in your chest as your lips meet in a slow, sensual kiss, full of warmth and longing. 
As the kiss deepens, as if, as if the universe aligns, the softness of her lips, the way her fingers graze your arm, every sensation is utterly perfect. You break the kiss and admire the soft lines of her neck before leaning in to kiss the supple skin, eliciting a soft moan. Oh, Ash. You suck gently at the tender skin, letting your teeth just barely graze it. She arches up against you. After a long moment, she pulls back to pepper soft kisses across your face and along your jaw. I trust you to protect me, but I also trust us to face this together. You tenderly stroke the side of her face as the soft touch of her lips helps to ease the tension in your muscles. If anything happened to you, Ava, it'd destroy me. I'm right here, Ash. Let me prove it to you. With hunger in her eyes, she moves closer to you, her body pressing against yours, the fire between you growing. No one else makes me feel the way you do. She runs her fingers down the muscular planes of your chest, the feather-like touch still enough to have you stiffening in your pants. The thoughts of the attacker fade as you're consumed by the moment with Ava, flaming her lips in a fiery kiss. God, Ava, you drive me crazy. Your voice is husky, filled with desire, and you feel the shiver that runs through her body at it. Take me, Ash. Take me right here, right now, however you want. Her body calls to you, a burning need to hold her in your arms, to feel every inch of her bare skin. That's nice and all, but we know where this is going to lead. Watch TV and cuddle instead. I'd love nothing more, but my mind's just not in the right place. Her face softens with concern as she looks into your eyes. Is there anything I can do to help? Just being with you is enough to make me feel better. A small smile tugs at the corner of her lips as you both settle into the cozy haven of the hotel bed, wrapped in each other's embrace. And there's nothing wrong with that. The following day, as you and Ava set step foot back onto the set in LA, your phone vibrates with a text from the fan con security team. Good news, the authorities have arrested the man who attacked Miss Cohen. It's a hell of a relief. Unfortunately, the only reason we found him was uh, because he attacked another guest. He thought it was Miss Cohen. Damn it. Is the victim okay? MT said she had uh, a possible concussion, but she'll be fine. I'll send you the file they gave us on the guy. You tuck the phone away, your free hand balled into a tight fist as rage and shame war for dominance within you. We'll talk about this issue at the end of the video. Everything's okay. Your attacker's in custody, but he hurt someone before they caught him. He thought she was you. Is she gonna be alright? Yes, but... An innocent got hurt on my watch. I should have... I shouldn't have ever let him out of my sight until the authorities arrived. It's not your fault. The security dropped the ball. And he's off the streets now. He won't be able to hurt anyone else. Hmm. You join Gemma and Raimi in Ava's trailer and relay the information to the fan con team forwarded you. According to the police, the man who attacked Ava was in LA for work when she received the first letter. Hey. Do you think he was the stalker, then? I don't know. Something feels off about it. The stalker wants uh, something from Ava, something to do with the movie. Attacking her wouldn't get them that. You're overthinking it, Ash. I'm inclined to agree. I'm not sure we can count on rational thought to explain their actions. Hmm. Ring instinct is telling me they're wrong, but that attack to prove my instincts aren't as good as they used to be. Maybe it's just that I just want an excuse to stay near her to make sure that she's safe, even though I clearly can't keep her that way. If Ash still thinks there's a chance I'm in danger... Raimi's probably right. The simplest explanation is usually the truth. Hmm. But we should keep up appearances until the premiere. A public breakup of Hollywood's favorite couple would overshadow the movie. That shouldn't be a problem. Ava and Ash are very close. Right. I just won't be her bodyguard anymore. 
I'm sure they'll get you back to your old security gig soon, but until then, it's business as usual. It's a little weird going back to how things used to be, though I guess things won't be entirely the same. Glance at Ava. Hope and affection in her eyes is like a knife through your heart, for example, for the reason you can't fully explain. Gemma pulls up her phone, and on, on screen is a video of the fan con incident. We need to spin this into something positive. Show everyone that you're safe and happy together. With a very public lunch date. Would that expose her even more? The best way to protect her is to keep her in the spotlight. The people at the fan con were the reason security got there so fast. Or words and a wave of guilt through that you failed to do anything to help Ava when she was attacked. And if we think the stalker's been dealt with, then we have nothing to worry about. Ava's gaze may chores, and in the moment the truth sinks in. Your love might be genuine, but it's not enough to keep her safe. That's BS. My feelings for her mean I don't trust anyone else to protect her, but they're also is a distraction that's keeping me from doing just that. As long as we're together, she's going to be in danger. I'll make a call to get you a nice table. <sighs> this has to end before I get her hurt. An hour later, you find yourself sitting on a rooftop restaurant with Ava. During a late lunch, we'll be under the watchful eyes of the paparazzi. You know, it was... that was a bit weird at first, but you not being my bodyguard... But I actually think this is the best thing that could have happened to us. Now we just can be a regular couple. A jagged pang tears through you at her words, knowing they can never be true. This is going to be your last date. I want to make it special. Soon the two of you are enjoying an expensive bottle of wine alongside a decadent dessert. You're really spoiling me today. Hmm. You reach across the table, your hand sinking hers, your fingers interlace, and the paparazzi and the world slowly fade around you. I want you to know that I'm thankful for everything we share. Your fingers trace the delicate contours of her hand, trying to memorize the feeling of her soft warmth. I am too, and for our future, Dad. But then the clamor of the paparazzi's cameras pulls you back to reality, and with it, the tension you've been carrying, with a soft smile, Ava lets go of your hand to place her own comforting on your arm. You're so good to me. Let me return the favor. She stands, rounding the table and perching delicately in your lap, uncaring of the onlookers. You know you shouldn't, but the temptation to wrap her in your arms and feel her pressed against you is too much to deny. You just being here is enough. She kisses you, her lips gentle but insistent. They part, letting you taste the sweetness of the dessert still on her tongue. A small part of you protests that you should just put a stop to this, but it's overtaken by your need for her. You clutch her to you, memorizing her scent, her every curve. Mmm, ash. She breathes harder, pressed pushing against your chest in a way you can't ignore. The things you do to me, Ava. She slides her hands down your waist, shielding from view of her body. She smiles, but questionably. You know, I can't feel it. She grazes your lap, her smile widening in what she finds there. How hard you are. You and her both glance at the swarm of press nearby. You know, we could always go somewhere more private. There's a secluded little beach just a few blocks away. We could lose the paparazzi on the boardwalk. She arches her back, pressing her hips against yours. Despite her wide, innocent eyes, she knows exactly what she's doing. You know all the right buttons to push. To get exactly what you want from me, don't you, Starla? Her eyes flash to the peak of your thighs, a playful smile on her lips. And what levers to pull... Your heart races, knowing that every passing second is one last that you'll get to spin with her. I could show her one last time just what she means to me. Like I said, oh, we'll talk about this at the end of the video. Actually, I think we should head out and walk home. Oh, okay. 
You get up and leave the restaurant to find a place where you can speak privately and have the most difficult conversation of your life. Back of her apartment, you soften in the front of the door. She glances at you, over at you nervously, sensing that something is off. Do you want to come in? The concern in her voice twists your heart, as does the knowledge that this may be the one last time you hear it. You take a deep breath, trying to find the right words and forcing them out. I'd better not. In fact, I think we should stop saying each other entirely. Her eyes meet yours, hurt and confusion written across her features. You... you don't mean that. You nearly crumble at the soft vulnerability in her voice, nearly break down and take the words back. Don't you dare be selfish, Sash. The stalker's dealt with, and it's clear I can't protect you. Not with how I feel about you. But you don't have to be my bodyguard anymore. But I'll still want to keep you safe. I'll still feel like it's my responsibility. Her lips tremble and a tear spills down her cheek. You set your jaw, even though it's physically hurts, not going to comfort her. I couldn't live with myself if you got hurt again. If I didn't stop it, you need someone you can rely on. I trust you with my life, Ash. I know you do. But I don't deserve that trust. This... This has to be goodbye. The weight of your words hangs in the air, and for a moment you hesitate, your heart aching. I should kiss her one last time. Kiss away her tears. Yeah, figuring you're the one that put them there. And with a deep breath, you step closer to her, leaning in to kiss the tears from her cheek. Her skin is warm, familiar against your lips, but you can't help but linger. Don't cry for me, Ava. She shakes her head, and you can feel her trembling underneath your touch. You ache to wrap her up in your arms to kiss her quivering lips. It doesn't have to be like this, please. Time seems to slow as you reluctantly draw back. You stare at her, memorizing her every feature, holding it in your heart. It's over, Ava. We're over. You're an idiot. Idiot. <laughs> Without further ado, <laughs> if you did enjoy the content, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Head down description. Thanks to check out there. Without further ado, let me say the following. <clears throat> so, man, it's almost like one of the writers on Pixel Bear is like, listen, I wrote this story. And then you're like, oh, can I take a look? Is it okay if I copy it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But go ahead and just, you know, change it a little so it doesn't look familiar to the teacher. And we keep going through this with almost every story, right? Oh no, there's a reason we can't be together. And literally, it's copy paste every time. There's always some really stupid, redundantly derp reason that we just literally can't have the thing. And it causes drama and it causes things that aren't necessary that I'm sure each and every person in the world agrees that once you've done it once, to do it over and over and over six plus times in a year okay i keep count that pretty much it gets to the point where you're just like you know what this is really stupid and you can't come up with any other writing like nuance okay you can't come up with anything else okay we could have had more suspense we could have had more thrills we could have had more anything but no We've got the same shit, different day. It's literally, that's all it is, okay? And I have to say it, okay? I've been saying it for a while. It's just getting to the point where I just don't even want to spend diamonds on this crap anymore, okay? Correct me if I'm wrong. And that's also stupid, too, because it's also copy and paste. It's always this chapter. It's our last together. That's it. It's over. Let's spend, you know, about 50 to 100 diamonds, and then, oh, I want to break it off with you. And it's pointless, it's needless, and you know what? I'm just going to say it. Any writer who literally signs off on this, okay, this many times in a year for this app, just literally needs to get their head checked, and also probably have your, your writemanship taken away from you, okay? You, you shouldn't be allowed to write anymore until you learn 
how to read other books and see how they actually like are bestsellers on New York Times and bestsellers list and Amazon and Audible and all this other stuff until you can figure out how to pull your head from your rear and write something other than the same copy and pay shit as six other times in the last year, then I don't know what to tell you. I'm just quite frankly getting tired of it. And I think each and every person should be saying about the same. You know, I'm, I'm just also going to finish this out with choices closed down their Discord community because they didn't want to listen to feedback. They also didn't want to bring the community together. They just wanted basically you all to give them story concepts and, and ideas and whatnot. You've had some of the biggest and best writers at the app slash company leave the company. And long story short is... If you go on the Wikipedia, or not Wikipedia, the uh, Reddit, right, and criticize them at all because, you know, the Reddit users over there, you know, especially the mods who think, you know, I'm a piece of work and they hate me, right, and they've accused me of things that they have literally no evidence of. Basically, they get really angry if you criticize choices or Pixelberry whatsoever. And then if my name shows up, the post gets very quickly deleted and that basically, yeah, no, people don't like me over there that are the mods. Most of everyone else is fine with me or doesn't even know who I am. So, yeah, no, I, I stay away from that community because they're all hero-worshipping Pixelberry at this moment. So I'm just saying, right? Um, quite frankly, I'm just tired of it, and I've been tired of it for six plus years, and the fact that most of the big writers who have left and doing other things right now are working on a new company and it's completely different from choices should pretty much be that red flare in the sky, right but you know again the the reddit users and the mods over there are just hero worshiping the ever loving shit out of the current choices and so they'll delete any posts um especially mine that gives criticize and literally fact checking and, and stating what's been happening at, at choices basically they're not allowed to be held accountable and don't you dare criticize their their heroes really not heroes I could go down the list of what is wrong with choices in Pixelberry, and I would pretty much have your jaw on the floor, but I digress. Thanks again for watching. Catch y'all later. Peace out.